good morning, everyone. Good morning. Got everybody here with us, and whether you're here in person, whether you're worshiping with us online. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. A few announcements as we go ahead and get started. Uh, the first announcement is that if you show up to school, uh, if you show up to Atonement tomorrow, and everybody's just lounging around, you know, in pajamas, kind of, it's okay. okay. Starting uh, tomorrow, we'll be celebrating here at Atonement National Lutheran Schools Week. Uh, the blessing that it is to be able to uh, be able to come here to a school where you can learn all of the good stuff like reading, writing, and arithmetic, and at the same time also be told daily how much Jesus loves you and all the grace that God has given to us. Uh, and so we've got a lot of festivities, a lot of celebrations, some of which are dress down days every week. And tomorrow is pajama day. So all the students have to do is literally roll out of bed into a car and come on down. And so uh, we'll be celebrating that all week. We're also uh, celebrating, we're thankful for all of our faculty and staff. Uh, that uh, make it uh, make it possible to be able to share the love of Jesus uh, every day. Uh, and so uh, I want to take a moment and uh, get all of our faculty staff who are here uh, this morning, go ahead and please stand so that you can be thanked, you can be acknowledged, you can be thanked. There we go. You're supposed to stand. We have, we have Mrs. Harney, who is our sixth grade homeroom teacher. We have Mrs. Helmers, who is our first grade teacher. We have Miss Lydia, who is our kindergarten aide. And even though he's defying the order, we have Mr. Arsenault, our music director. Uh, and so we are blessed to have all of them here with us. All right, and then also we're blessed because one of our teachers, Mrs. Sonia, is at any moment going to be adding to the family, okay? Due day is today, if I'm correct, okay? Supposed to be today. We'll see if it's today or uh, when, uh, when he decides to make his uh, appearance. But uh, also, uh, we are coming up, as you can kind of maybe tell from the, uh, the amount of red you see in the seats, it's Mardi Gras season. Uh, and so what that means is a few things. One... Sometimes there are less people, and we are going to pray that they are watching online on the parade route right now as they're waiting for everything. And especially you know, if there's any more tree crashes, they'll be waiting a little bit longer. Uh, but also what that means is then for next weekend, uh, next weekend there's no Bible study, no Sunday school. We will have church, but there's no Bible st uh, study or Sunday school uh, beforehand, just the church service at 10. Uh, and then that also means that the following Wednesday, it's going to be an interesting one this year. Wednesday, February the 14th. First and foremost, gentlemen, Valentine's Day, right? Second of all, depending on where you go, maybe more important, it's also Ash Wednesday. It's the start of the season of Lent. During the season of Lent, we have our midweek Advent services at 7 p.m. Ash Wednesday is going to be the only one where we will have a meal beforehand for Lent. So, gentlemen, I've got your out. What says romantic love than coming here and having a meal with your beloved on Ash Wednesday? We'll get the uh, we'll get the tables out. It'll be great. It'll be adorable. You can look her in the eye and say, "I love you," and so does Jesus. It'll be awesome. Okay? So join us for dinner at six. Uh, service at seven. It'll be a full service with communion. Uh, the final announcement that I have for us uh, this morning is uh, we have the blessing. Uh, I kind of referenced it earlier. We do have the blessing of being able to live stream our service and have it online because we do have. A number of members for a variety of reasons uh, that are uh, still active and love atonement, love God, but aren't able to come uh, to services. One of those is our very own Bob Olmstead. And Bob Olmstead today has a birthday. 
And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to sing. And Rick has a microphone because they don't, they don't always hear the congregation singing when we, uh, we do the live stream. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to sing Happy Birthday to Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. God's blessings. And uh, I invite you to please stand as we begin our service with our opening hymn. make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. Confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us take a moment for self-examination. Oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Having again received Christ's forgiveness, we now take a moment and extend his peace with one another. And God's peace to you at home. Lord be with you. Thank you very much, and let us pray. Oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first two readings.
invite you to please stand for the Alleluia and Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day. Every one of you, amen. 
Who doesn't love a good restoration story? Right? No matter how you put it, we, we like it in our movies, we like it in our, our literature, right? We like the, the restoration, the, the rags to riches, pulling themselves up by their own bootstraps. What was wrong being made right? And then look at the shows you can watch on TV. Hey, you, you can watch whether it's uh, restoring houses, restoring antiques, or, or some of my favorite ones because I get to see things that I could never uh, afford to buy. Right? Those shows that are, are like restoring old cars, right? where they, they find these things and they, they show you a picture of, of what they used to be when, when they were in all of their glory. And now you, you see them now as they, they found them you know, buried in the bottom of somebody's barn way out yonder. You know, some are found in like lakes and swamps. Some have been just sitting there collecting dust and vermin throughout all of these years. And they're cracked, they're broken, they're, they are a mere shell, sometimes not even that much, of their former self. And you see what they've become. But the, the great thing about these shows, whether it's the cars, whether it's the homes, whether it's the antiques, whether it's the, even the people, right? We have those kind of shows as well. Is that you have the beginning where you see this, but then you've got the end. And in the end, all of a sudden, you see the restored, the renewed, the wonderful, wonderful looking thing. What it used to be. To what it is now. I mean, look at that. <laughs> A GTO, come on. Show of hands, who, who had one of these back in the day? Hey? Okay. Well, we got to elevate our cool game here, Atonement. Come on now. But yeah, I mean, these beautiful things, right? Whether it's the, the house that's so beautifully renewed, whether it's the car, whatever it is. We love these kinds of stories because there's what it was supposed to be, what it used to be, then what it became, and now what it is in all of its glory. The great thing, the great thing is we've got a God who gives us a story like this. Because first and foremost, we see what it was. And that's what we've been talking about as we've been going through this Eden sermon series, which we're going to be wrapping up today, right? We've seen what it was, right? We've seen where in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what do we hear each time after he has created something that day? We hear as we do here at the end of chapter 1, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And see, the, the sixth day is the only one where you have that very. Days one through five, it's, it's, he looked out and he saw that it was good. And you've heard me use this example before. When God says it is good, it's not like when somebody you know, is trying a new recipe out, right? Or, or, or they're adding something in and they shove a spoonful in your mouth. They're like, tell me, what do you think? that kind of good. When God says it is good, it is wow. It is amazing, wonderful, stupendous, of the ground, put his breath into him, and God planted a garden in, in Eden, in the east, and he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of 
the knowledge of good and evil. And it was good. Okay. okay. Some of you are awake. Yes. Right? It was good. Everything was great. Everything was wonderful. This is what it was supposed to be like. Like when that GTO for the very first time rolled off onto the showroom floor. But as we've talked about, as Paul Harvey always said, there's the rest of the story. And we know the rest of the story, right? We know that that good didn't last too long. We've talked about how then sin entered the world. How Eve and Adam both were tempted. Eve and Adam both fell into sin. And because of sin, that, that corruption, that decay, death entered into the world and has trickled down all the way to us. And all of a sudden, this garden, this beauty, this perfection, humanity had it no more. In fact, listen to what it says at the end of Genesis 3. It says, he drove out the man, and at the east of, of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. I always think this, you know, when, when, I, when I read this verse, but especially now, you know, as we're in February, the month of love. Usually when we think of cherubim, what do we think of, right? We think the chubby little babies, sometimes wearing a diaper, sometimes naked with the little air. Ah, right? That's not what this cherubim is looking like. He's got a flaming sword that turns every way, barring humanity from entering the garden. Barring humanity from being that place where, where it's supposed to be good, it's supposed to be wonderful, everything's supposed to be great and perfect, and now it is no more. Now there's death and destruction and chaos. And we see how that has just continued, continued even to this day. I mean, it gets easy, yeah, to see the, the death, the destruction, the chaos out there. When we turn on the news, when we read the reports, when we hear about wars here and, and shootings there and, and, and bad things happening over there. But then we see that there's also all those things happening in our life. Maybe not to the extremes that we see on the news, but we see where this destruction, this chaos, this decay and death has entered in. As we stand there, burying our loved ones, and then going on to bicker about all the things they left behind. As we sit there, pondering our broken relationships with family and friends. As we sit there wondering, well, did, does God still really care? Why, well, why do all these bad things happen to me? And we can feel like Adam and Eve as they're driven out in the garden, afraid, wondering what's next, remembering what we used to be. But as I mentioned, we have a God who's in the restoration business. A God who takes us as, as we're like the, the GTO in that first video montage, right? Broken, falling apart, rusted out, a shell of our old self. And God comes and restores. I mean, listen, listen to some of these other passages that we hear in Scripture about how God is in this restoration business. In, in the book of Amos, Amos chapter 9, we get this, this passage, but just to kind of set it in context, right? Amos is, is he's not one of the, the cheery kind of prophets that we get in the Old Testament. Amos, he's, he's considered one of the minor prophets, but Amos comes to, to a group of people, to Israel, who's, who's longing for the day of the Lord. Longing for the day of the Lord because they see it as this time. Well, look, look at all these bad things that are happening to us. Oh, woe is us. All these countries are, are dominating us, taking us over. Blah, blah, blah. We're supposed to be God's chosen people. That's our birthright. And so we want the day of the Lord. And Amos says, oh, <laughs> hold your horses. 
the day of the Lord's coming, but it's, it's not going to be what you think. Because when the day of the Lord comes, there's, there's judgment that comes with it. He, he judges. He separates the sheep and the goats. He, he comes in and he says, you have done wrong. But even in the midst of that, we still hear gospel in Amos, where we hear about God's restoration. Amos chapter 9, beginning with verse 14, we hear these words. God says, I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. They shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. And what he's talking about, what he's referencing here, isn't a, a, a nation of Israel. So often we can read these verses and we get stuck on that part. But you and I, we are the new Israel. We are God's people, chosen and beloved. And what he is saying is there will come a time where there's never going to be an opportunity for them to get uprooted. Never be an opportunity for the enemy to come after them anymore. Where I will rebuild, I will restore, and it's going to be for eternity. And it's going to be wonderful. He says also in another prophet, one of the ones that we know a little bit more, right? The prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, he says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. In other words, there's going to be that time where everything is restored, everything is new, and it's going to be so great, so wonderful. We're going to be so captivated and so focused on God that we're not going to remember anything else. I mean, how many of us... You don't have to raise your hand, but feel free if you want to have things that have happened in our life that we wish we could forget. There's the things that we want to forget that we always remember. The things we want to remember that we always forget. But we have those things that we wish we could forget. And God says, you're not going to remember those anymore. It's going to be new. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be good. God's in the restoration business. He restores us, right? I mean, we heard that in the first reading that, that Carrie referenced in Corinthians where he comes and he says, we are a new creation. And, and let that sink in because he doesn't restore like we do, right? Like we restore and, and you know, whether it's the cars, right? Like, okay, one of the things about the cars that makes the, those car shows, I mean, that's the ones I watch. I, I don't watch the house ones, but I watch the car ones, right? And what are they doing? They're, okay, well, I need a, uh, this is a, a 65 Chevelle, and, and I need a, 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 a transmission for 65. Oh, I can't, I can't find one. Well, okay, we're going to get this one shipped from, you know, England, and it's going to come over. It's going to take, and, and there's all that stuff. I'm trying to make it as, as close to the original as possible. And God says, uh, we're making this all new. We are a new creation. Through Jesus. The old has gone. The new has come. And then the second reading that Gary had. It was from two different chapters in the book of Revelation. This, this vision that is given to the apostle John as he's there uh, on, on the island and he, he's in exile. And God gives him this vision. This is what is to come. It starts out and says there's a new heaven. A new earth. For the first time, the first earth has passed away. The sea was no more. And I saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride for her husband. I, I love that image. Right? Prepared as a, a bride. The new Jerusalem, the new place where God's people will dwell. And it's prepared as this bride. I mean, just think about that. Maybe think back to your wedding day. Right? Or, or, or if you haven't been married, maybe you, you've probably been to weddings. Right? You know that moment when the, the doors in the back finally open and the, the father, the bride, and the bride start coming up the aisle. And you look there and maybe you're the groom or you see the groom. And it's just like you hear the, the Berlin song, right? Take my breath away. Right? And it's just, again, now you know why Evan doesn't let me sing. And it's just, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. It's like, oh, it's captivated by that. And we're given this image that that's how God 
sees this new creation right, as a bride adorned for her groom. And he's like, yes, that, this, this is good. This, this is the way it's supposed to be. And, and we see as it keeps on going, right? It says, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river. Get this, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for healing of the nation. We got the tree of life back. It's there. Remember, they fall. They take the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They get kicked out of the garden. Sin comes. Death comes. And they're kept from the tree of life because God has mercy. He has grace. He doesn't want them to live like this. He doesn't want us to have to live like this forever. But now, now that everything is new, everything is restored, everything is perfect again, here's the tree of life. And it's just on both sides of the river. And we have access and, and we get to eat of its fruit. We get to be renewed, restored again. And it keeps going. It says no longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. People always ask, you know, well, what are you going to do in heaven? <laughs> or all of a sudden, you know, we... we we like to, to have those, those wonderful thoughts of, oh, you know, Papa, he's probably up there helping God build mansions for us, getting everything ready. You know, um, you know, Grandma, she's there, and, and, and she's cooking up a, a meal, and it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But we're told what we're going to be doing. We're going to be worshiping God, and it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Again, it's going to be like it was supposed to be, what it was created to be. And for now, we have to do what none of us like to do. We have to do the thing where our inner child comes out. Is it time yet? Okay. Maybe you've experienced this or are experiencing it right now. All right, you're out there on the parade ground. When's it going to get here? Has it started? You get that little bit of glimmer of hope and, oh, that's just the, the you know, chase car. That's, oh, man. Just the anticipation, the, the wanting, the desire. That's what we have now. And as we wait, we're, we're called to, to love our neighbor. As ourselves, we're called to, to live out our faith. We're called to come and worship and love God. To constantly be reminded and encouraged that, yes, in all of our frailties and all of our challenges and all of our struggles, this is not the end. But we're waiting for the true restoration. We're waiting for that moment where he comes and he makes all things new. And he says, come with me to this paradise for eternity. To him be glory now and forever. Amen. God bless you. And we continue our service with the gathering of our gifts and our offerings.
I invite you to please stand as we continue with the prayers of the church. Gracious eternal Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us. Lord, we pray that as we wait with eager anticipation for that moment in which you will come to gather all who have faith in you and to restore and renew our relationship with you and, and to make the new heaven and the new earth, that you would help us to look always to you. That you equip us and encourage us to share your love and your grace with others so that they too may join us in the new eternity. But Lord, until that time comes, we know that we are still living in this fractured and broken world. Where we have death and illness, pain and anguish. We pray that you would be with all of those who are suffering. We pray that you would be with, with Jean and Steve and Cindy and Rose, with Florence and Warren, Bob and Gail, with Don and Nancy, with, with Warren and Kay, with Wolf, with Bill, with all who are, who are on our list, our hearts, Lord, you know their challenges, their struggles. We pray that you'd be with them, be with the doctors and the nurses who are caring for them. Give them insights into the best treatments possible. Lord. Even in all the challenges that life gives us, we still see glimmers of your love, of your grace. We still see you at work. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Lord, we, we thank you for the baby that is uh, to be born soon to, uh, to Chloe and to Robert. Lord, we also thank you for the anticipation of the, of the baby that is to come for, for Carla and for Michael. And Lord, you, you love us, you love life, and we just ask that you continue to be with, with mother and, and, and with the babies, and Lord, just watch over them, guide them, help everybody to be strong and healthy. Lord, we just, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. We thank you for the opportunity to be here, Atonement Lutheran Church and school. And we thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this Lutheran school and for all Luther schools, where every day we get the opportunity to share of your love, your grace, your mercy, to remind the children and their families, remind ourselves as a faculty and staff that you are here for us, that you promised to never leave us or forsake us. Lord, all these requests, all that our hearts and our minds, we bring them before you, trusting your promise not only to hear our prayers, but to answer them according to your loving and gracious will. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing.
We pray as Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. After giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, shed for you for the full forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
invite you to please stand for the singing of the Nook Diminis. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And we pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us for the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Chairs can stay if you want them to. Thank you.